Good morning. I hope y'all are doing well today. Today we're going to be talking about Rube Burrow and Jim Burrow. They are very famous, just like Jesse James. Uh, they are from Lamar County. And Rube Burrow was born in 1856 and died in 1890. He was headed, headed a gang of train robbers that included his younger brother Jim that made off with thousands of dollars. Although there is little hard evidence to support them, a number of legends have grown up around Burrow as the Alabama Robin Hood because he allegedly never robbed the poor. The vast majority of his thefts targeted the United States Postal Service and railroad companies. It is certain, however, that Burrow shot and killed at least one man. Now, Reuben Houston Burrow, also known as Rube Burrows, was born in Lamar County, near the town of Solgent. On December the 11th, probably in 1856, on the farm of his parents, Alan and Mary Caroline Burrow. Some sources list his birth year as 1854, and his tombstone so says 1855. Burrow was one of ten children, and their mother was known in the area as Dame Burrow. She was a faith healer, also considered a witch. Now, as boys Rube and his brother Jim, 1858 to 1888, became inspired by tales of the outlaw Jesse James and his gang, according to some accounts, Burrow donned a mask and robbed a neighbor at gunpoint at the age of 15, but his father recognized him and forced him to return the money. In the fall of 1872, he moved to Stephenville, Texas to work as a head on his Uncle Joel Burrow's cattle ranch. Three years later, Rue Burrow married Virginia Alveson, daughter of prominent Wise County rancher H.B. Alveson, and the couple would have two children. Burrow's brother Jim decided to join him in Texas in 1876. Now, Burrow purchased land soon after his marriage and established his own farm. In 1880, Virginia died of yellow fever, and Burrow returned briefly to Alabama to leave the children with his mother. He returned to Texas and resumed his life as a farmer and cowhand. In 1884, he remarried, and he married a lady named Adeline Hoover of Ethrath County. Having always been athletic, Burrow quickly gained a reputation of an excellent rider and marksman and was soon leading a band of cowboys, including future outlaw cohorts Henderson Bromley and Nep Thornton. Now, in 1886, Burrow's farm failed and he separated from his second wife. Perhaps inspired by the recent exploits of the Texas train robber Sam Bass and his gang, he formed an outlaw gang with Jim Thornton and Bromley. The gang first headed to what was at the time Indian Territory, now known as Oklahoma, but met with little success. In December, the gang robbed $300 from a train on the Fort Worth and Denver line at Bellevue, Texas on their way home to Arath County. Now, on January the 23rd, 1887, these two gentlemen uh, robbed a train with his other gang members on the Texas and Pacific line at Gordon, Texas, netting several thousand dollars. After escaping into the Texas Hill Country, the men returned home to Alexander and resumed their normal lives to avoid attention from the authorities. Now, in March, the Burrow brothers purchased land in Erath County and earned their living as cattlemen and farmers until early May. Burrow then raised his former gang, augmented by the ranch hand, William Brock, and made plans to rob the train to Gordon again. They were forced to turn back by high waters, though, in the Brazo River. On June the 4th, 1887, they robbed a train at the town of Benbrook, and it's in Texas, and made off with more than $2,000, and y'all know that's a lot of money back then. After returning for a time to their farms again to avoid suspicion, they robbed the same train in Benbrook in September netting more than 2500 In November, Burrow and his brothers traveled to Lamar County to visit their family. In December, while still in Alabama, the brothers appeared to have met up with William Brock and robbed the St. Louis, Arkansas, and Texas Railroad lines in Genoa, Arkansas. 
On December the 9th, they made off with the monies collected for the Illinois lottery, raising the attention of the Pinkerton National Detective Agency, which, of course, was a private security and investigative organization often employed by the railroad companies. After a brief skirmish with a sheriff and his men outside Texarkana, Arkansas, the Burrow brothers returned to Lamar County and William Brock headed back to Texas. There, the Pinkerton agents traced him via coats the men had discarded near the tracks after the robbery arrested them on December the 31st, 1887, outside the town of Dublin, Texas. He soon implicated the Burrow brothers and told the detectives where they were. Now, in early January of 1888, Pinkerton assistant Superintendent John McGinn raised a party in Lamar County to arrest Burrow at his house, but lost him after a series of errors about which house was the right one. That night, the brothers boarded a Louisville and Nashville train just south of Birmingham and headed south. A conductor on the train recognized them from the police fire flyers, wired ahead to the station in Montgomery, Alabama, where the brothers intended to get off, and arranged for the police to meet the train when it stopped. The police attempted to lure them to the jail when they left the train, but posing as railroad workers and offered to find them lodging. However, the Burroughs realized the ruse and fought with the police. Rube escaped after shooting an officer, but Jim was captured. Burrow escaped the subsequent manhunt, stole a horse, and headed south, where his pursuits lost his trail. Burrow then turned back north and returned to Lamar County to seek news of his brother, who was now imprisoned in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, in March of 1888, Burrow partnered with Leonard Seabrock, also known as Lewis Waldrop, who had worked with Burrow as a ranch hand in Texas, and convinced him to adopt the name of notorious Texas train robber Joe Jackson. Now, uh, he did this to strike fear in pursuers by convincing them that he had taken up with an even more dangerous outlaw. The men set out from Lamar County and traveled south through Columbus, Mississippi, before heading east and seeking shelter in a lodging camp, logging camp in the backwoods of Baldwin County, Alabama. In May, Burrow and Brock headed back north to Lamar County, hoping that their pursuers had given up interest in the area. After reaching home, Burrow began working on a plan to free his brother from jail. In August, Burrow and Brock headed for Little Rock after learning that Jim Burrow would be moved to Texarkana. Now, the men could not intercept Burrow's train. However, after arriving, sorry, we lost our picture. There we go. After arriving in Texarkana, Jim Burrow wrote home to his family and send funds for a lawyer and voiced his belief he would be acquitted of all charges when his trial took place for the following March. Well, in late September, however, he fell ill and he died on October the 5th, 1888, most likely of tuberculosis back then. Having failed in their rescue attempt, Burrow and Brock headed back to Lamar County, taking back roads to avoid detection. On December the 15th, 1888, they robbed a train in Duck Hill, Mississippi, and shot and killed a passenger who attempted to thwart the robbery. Now, his mother raised his murder raised alarms in the national press and among the railroad companies, who feared loss in revenue if the safety of the train travel came under question, because the description of the shooter also matched that of train robber Eugene Bunch. The Pinkertons pursued him rather than Burrow. Now, Burrow and his men returned safely to Lamar County. When Burroughs' extended family provided the men with supplies and safe haven through the spring of 1889 and kept watch for detectives and bounty hunters. All went well for Burroughs and Brock until the first week of July when Burroughs shot the local postmaster for refusing to hand over a suspicious package containing a wig and false mustache. And in the aftermath, three of the Burroughs' relatives were jailed briefly for aiding the outlaws. Safe among Burrow's network of relatives, however, the men remained in the area until September. Now, during the first week of September, Burrow and Brock, now joined by Burrow's cousin, Rube Smith, set out to the southwest in search of a likely site for their next train robbery. 
They robbed the mail car and express car of the Mobile and Ohio Railroad line at Bunkatuna, Mississippi, of several thousand dollars and then returned to Lamar County once again. By November, however, the police and bounty hunter presence were making Burrow nervous. With the help of his father, Burrow and Brock purchased an ox cart and traveled to Flamonton, Escumbia County, arriving on December the 14th, 1889. Several days later, Rube Smith and associate James McClung were captured at the armory, uh, Mississippi, after attempting to rob a train. The men were imprisoned in Aberdeen, Mississippi. For the next two months, detectives searched all over Alabama for Burrow and Brock, and in early February, a detective questioned a ferryman at a crossing near Milton, Florida, and learning that Burrow and his companion had split up after reaching Flomaton, and that Burrow was working at a lodging camp in Santa Rosa County, Florida, across the Yellow River. Once again, Burrow somehow detected an ambush on his grain hauling route and escaped into the woods. Brock, however, was captured on a train in the Fernbank Station in Lamar County, where he traveled in the hope of finding Burrow. After his arrest, Brock was taken to the prison in Memphis, Tennessee to await trial. Well, on September the 1st, 1890, word reached detectives of the robbery of an l &N train at Pollard that apparently Burrow had pulled off single-handedly. Well, detectives traced him back to the camp in Santa Rosa County in Florida and took up watch in the home of the family that Burrow had been staying with. The family got word to Burrow, however, and he fled the area and lived in the backwoods. Outside Burrow, however, uh, outside Demopolis in Marengo County, Burrow was recognized by a man who tricked Burrow into stopping at a friend's house for dinner and who, with the help of of the friend captured Burrow and held him until detectives arrived. Now Burrow was then bound to a horse and taken to Linden, the Marengo County seat. On the morning of October the 9th, 1890, Burrow had not been in custody for half a day when he attempted to escape by getting the police to untie his hands so he could eat, then pulling a hand pistol on them. He made his way to the front of the jail where he engaged in a shootout with local merchant Jefferson Davis Carter Burrow fired all of his bullets in his pistol, striking Carter once in the abdomen before Carter shot Burrow in the chest as he turned to run, killing him instantly. Rube Burrow's body was shipped by train back to Lamar County, making several stops along the way so that the public could see the body of the famous train robber. Now, his weapons were also put on display in Memphis, Tennessee, and attracted huge crowds. When his body reached Sullivan. It was collected by his father, and Burrow was buried in Fellowship Cemetery. Exactly one month later, former gang member William Brock leapt to his death from the top floor of the Brock Penitentiary in Jackson, Tennessee, after receiving a life sentence. This is a picture of him once he was captured. Um... And just so you know, you can also check out additional sources. There's books called Rude Burrow, King of Outlaws and His Band of Train Robbers, An Accurate and Faithful History of Their Exploits and Adventures. It's written by uh, Henry Company in 1890. Uh, Will Stanley Hool, The Saga of Rude Burrow, The King of American Train Robbers and His Band of Outlaws. Uh, Tuscaloosa Confederate Publishing Company in 1981. And then there's also an article from the New York Sun on Rube Burrow, the outlaw, on October the 12th, 1890, that you can check out. Uh, you can also go to the Encyclopedia of Alabama and find out information on several other outlaws. I hope y'all found this interesting. Until next time, have a wonderful week.